Okay, so we know about condensation and condensation nuclei. Now we're going to talk about precipitation. Yay! But before we can get into the different types of precipitation, which is coming up, we're going to talk about how it forms, just in general. And they all form one of two ways. Okay, they all start out with that condensation nuclei. And you can see all those little condensation nuclei around here. And then what happens? Well, remember, you get that one water droplet that condenses onto it and it waves a big flag saying, hey, come on, over here is the party. So they all just swarm until you get um, tiny little droplets. And as you get droplets, well, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So now you have a large cloud droplet. And if you look, how large is it? It's 0 0.05 millimeters, right? Really, really small. So your typical one is 0 0.02, a large one is 0 0.05, and you're like, well, that's really small. Mm -hmm. Here is a typical raindrop, two millimeters, right? And if you have a ruler handy, just look at the millimeters, tiny. A typical raindrop is two millimeters. I would argue in Florida, they might be bigger. I mean, have you been caught in those rainstorms? They don't seem like they're two millimeters. And if you look, they have a typical human hair here, and so you can see how thick that is compared to how big a raindrop is. Now, like I said, two processes form the precipitation. The first one, all right, so the Bergeron process doesn't happen in warm areas. It happens in mid to high latitude areas. And it also can happen if you're at a really high altitude. And it's the same process you have here condensation nuclei and your water vapor attaching to it and your cloud droplet but in with these cloud droplets they start to collect and actually they turn to ice and eventually into snow and so all of the precipitation that happens in mid to high latitudes actually starts as snow or ice and then as it falls it starts to melt into a raindrop and continues to fall as rain unless it's too cold and then it will refreeze but we'll talk about that later so in the bergeron process it all kind of just collects so it starts with the the same condensation nuclei adds the water droplets forms cloud droplets those cloud droplets condense together or collide together to get the ice droplets or ice crystals and then into snow, and then it all the precipitation starts as ice or snow and turns into rain as it falls. Okay, so this is an important process to know because it happens almost everywhere else. Here we have warm clouds because, well, we're pretty warm. Now, our upper clouds, like our upper, our upper cirrus clouds, those are probably ice. But most of our clouds that we are going to see are going to be water droplets. So what happens here if it doesn't freeze into ice and then melt into rain? Well, this is kind of fun because what happens, and there's a couple of things here, um, the wording is just the same. Okay, so the collision coalesce pro process um, already starts out with you have your cloud droplets and they're water, they stay water, and they fall through the cloud. And as they fall through the cloud, they start to collect the other cloud droplets around it. And so it gets bigger. Now the more surface area you have, the more cloud droplets you can collect. So it collects more cloud droplets. And of course, the bigger you get, the faster you're gonna fall until you hit terminal velocity. And you're gonna collect more and more. This is a large cloud droplet, right? But 0 0.05 millimeters and it starts to gather all those other droplets and get bigger and starts to fall faster and it reaches two millimeters a typical raindrop and then it keeps going and going and going and as it starts to go you can actually see it forms almost a bean shape because this guy and this guy are starting to fall just a little bit faster in the middle not falling quite as fast and so you get this kind of bean shape to it now i would argue because i have been in let's just go with too many rainstorms in florida that it just falls out of the cloud at this point here and we get large things but what should happen is it should 
break at this point. It can't handle any more. And so it breaks into smaller droplets again. And then these guys all fall down and they collect and they get big and the whole cycle just continues to repeat.